G'day folks, today I'm working on the new Frankenstein aquaponics system, thought I'd bring you along, but first off, I thought we would say good morning to the Sleepy Jades. So, yeah, not a lot of action going on there in the tank at the moment. Nice and clear water though, that tends to happen when they don't feed a lot. Uh, but today, I don't think I'm going to get to actually move any of these components up here. Um, I think that will be happening a little bit down the line, but I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on where I'm up to. So to start off with, I needed to work out how I was going to situate the tank, uh, make sure it gets a nice flat level surface. So I decided pretty much well to mark out the area where it's going to be, and then remove some pavers and try and create a nice level flat surface for it to sit on. Thought I'd use a couple of short sections of pine sleeper, but I've decided on just pulling out another layer of pavers. Yes, there's three layers of pavers there. It's the easiest way to store them and create a bit of a firm sand base. And a little bit later on, Bianca's gonna come down and help me pop that on there. And just to let you know, that section of cage and those two sleepers there are to protect the level sand from someone and his paws as he likes to run around in it. Now, I've been playing around with the position of a few bits and pieces and I've decided that I'm not going to go with this setup. Basically what I was thinking was radial flow, biofilter, stump tank out of that round 500 litre plus tank, and then the dual root zone over the top. I was hoping to use the round tank, but it's just not going to fit nice and neatly with the large bed that goes across the front. It won't give me a lot of room to walk across there. And I think it just, yeah, the layout just doesn't suit it. Also, too, there wouldn't be enough room on the other side to have the NFT rails coming through and delivering water into the sump. So, yes, uh, that needs to go, and I'll just be moving that bed there over to here. Uh, one thing you might be able to notice is we have a lot more sunlight down there. You might recall from the last video, it was fairly shaded down there, and I really want the maximum amount of sun because we are in winter. So what I decided to do was trim the old deer back, opened up the canopy a little bit so it definitely gets the morning sun. And those tree trimmings didn't go to waste. I mulched them up and they're now suppressing some weeds under trees elsewhere. So jobs for today. Well, this fish tank needs to go in situ over there. I was going to do it myself, but then I figured, you know, I might scrape the sand, make it unlevel. So I'll wait for Bianca to finish her jobbies in the house and we'll pop that over there. I need to, um, I'll chat about the filters and that bits and those bits and pieces later. First off, I think I might just move all this stuff and we'll set up the sump. This IBC I was going to use has no valve. Uh, it's something I've used to store materials in like potting soil. Kept this hole on the downward slope with a little bit of shake cloth behind it and it's just, yeah, drained out any moisture and just somewhere I could store bulk material. It has cracks all through the opening here, so I can't seal it up properly. So I was thinking about popping in a uni seal and a pipe with an end cap uh, to make it watertight, but it's not going to work. So I can't use this one here. Um, it'll probably house the clay beads uh, as we're moving the system. I'm gonna use the cage. I really don't wanna go out and, and buy materials um, for this job. There are a few bits and pieces I do need to buy. More about that later. So I'm going to repurpose a smaller sump tank, a smaller um, IBC in there. The reason being is I'm only going to have 400 litres of grow bed in there. So I don't need a flood and drain that is. So I don't need a large sump. Every other system in here will be a flow through system of one sort or another. So I, it won't be, they won't be taking water from the sump tank. So I think I can get away with a smaller sump and what I proposed to replace that with is one of these IBCs we have set aside for when we move to the farm. What I'm planning on doing is using this one here. It looks to be around about the largest. I dare say it's so around about 525 and just over 125 gallons. So that will house more than enough water to cover the pump and also flood and drain a 400 litre grow bed. I have no issues there. The one thing I will have to do though, is replace this overflow port. This old grommet is eaten away. This, I think this wicking bed's about 10 years old. So it went out. It was part of our front gardens originally. There you go. Something was just popped straight through. And it's actually a size smaller. Have to get a smaller grommet and plug back in a minute. Now I have the right bits I need. It's a 20 mil or a um, probably three quarter inch-ish 
grommet that just goes through with a little end cap. Yeah, I've just lubricated it with a bit of water from the tap. Hopefully that'll help. There we go. And that should seal that up nicely. Now, I haven't cleaned this out as of yet, but I just want to get everything in situ just to show you folks the uh, rough layout. So onwards to the sump. Now on to the top of that will go the floating raft bed. So I think I might have to change around the way that this one here is sitting just to give the pipe better access while well, we'll, we'll play around with that in a minute. So now the stand, uh, this is one that John made up that came with the system. It's a little bit out of whack, but it'll do for now. Now these rails here will just go over that back one on the sump tank there. And that water will flow down into the sump directly. I might even be able to get one of my other rails set up. Uh, it's a proper NFT rail, we'll just wait and see. And obviously this all needs to be leveled out and this slightly higher and all the rest, but there you go. Now I'm going to set up the other grow bed here. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm just using a green one that I have. Um, that we'll be using up on the farm. But this will just give you a rough idea of the layout. We could actually come this way a little bit more. So there we go, that's this one set up here. And of course it will be higher to compensate for the drain going into the sump tank. That's this end of the build. Now up to the other end. Now I think we've run into a bit of a problem here with my design. This here will not fit. We won't have a path through there. We could probably walk around the back of it. This is the flow through wicking bed, by the way. And we're going to have problems with the door on the cabinet opening. So I have to rethink my design for the bathtub to fit in here. And if I was to use an IBC, it would actually be wider again. So I think I'm going to have to swap this over with the NFT. So what are we looking at? We're looking at, oh, we'll call that 162 centimeters or five foot three and a half ish inches let's see if this fits over here and yes we will have room to spare there will be enough room for me to muck around with the plumbing underneath so i suppose i'll move all these bits and pieces around back in a tick folks while we watch me play Legos with the system, figuring things out, I thought I'd remind you that I do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginners online guide, 1995 US. It starts off with what is aquaponics, then goes all the way through to building your own system. Not only that, how to cycle the system and gives you a couple of pointers on the plants that you might like to start off with as well. You can check it out and also my online store using the links down in the description. That's enough of me spruiking, back to the design layout. Well, I've had a change of heart, folks, and what we're going to end up with now is something a little bit more compact and everything more sump-centric, so to speak. These rails here, they will have to be pushed into the sump tank a little bit further, which is really no huge issue whatsoever. I lose two growing spots on both. The reason being is I don't want them hanging out over the side here because hopefully we will have a bobcat coming up and down here to do some earthwork soon to get the house ready for us to move out uh, when the time comes. Now, it also helps because the drain work from the flood and grow, uh, flood and drain grow bed will come underneath. And so there's just one obstacle there. Now this flow through wicking bed will be moved closer to the sump as well, which means the pipe work won't really cause an obstacle. What I can do is I can come in here. There will be enough walkway considering the tank is round. It will end round about there enough walkway to come through here and access the sump for any issues. Not only that, also to service the radial flow settler, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then over the back there, the access for that back area will have to come through here. I'm going to have to move my dear old black turmeric. It's pretty much all died back for the winter anyway, and um, knock out some of these Queensland arrow roots over there. And there's a bit of dragon fruit growing through there as well, but I'll be able to just walk up through there and into there, maybe put down a little bit of a paver path. And that way I can access this side of the grow beds. And as you can see, yes, everything is still on a big slope, a um, bit of an angle there. So I do need to chalk them up, but I'm thinking this is pretty much well lit. I think I have the rough layout sorted out. 
and all we need now is for Bianca to come down and give me a hand with the tank and yeah I can start thinking about the filtration these were the barrels I was going to use I mentioned this in a um, supporter video the other day but they're a little bit too narrow for me to get down into and try and attach waterproof fittings down the bottom and this one here if I can get the lid off I can show you it does have a fitting down there um, but it's just a, a basic push-on fitting. Dad was using this as a water drum for his wet pots. We just had a pipe coming down there and then the line, spaghetti line went out to the ceramic irrigation pots. So a little bit hard to work on. So what I'm looking at doing is buying a couple of blue barrels just like the existing 200 litre or 50-ish 50, 50 gallon blue barrels we use as the radial flow settler. Now, these guys here are generally pretty expensive when you buy them through um, uh, stock or farm supply stores. Found a couple cheap on Facebook Marketplace, uh, 25 bucks and 20 bucks. So I'm going to pick a couple of them up and I'm going to use these to plumb up. The reason being is they're a lot wider and you can actually get down and play around with the fittings. There's a dirty radial flow settler for you. Uh, you can get around there. I can get my whole body and shoulders in there to make sure the plumbing is nice and watertight. And we won't have any issues whatsoever and they're a little bit they're a little bit shorter as well which will probably help keep everything uniform also too I like that these barrels here tend to have a flatter side than the other barrels so they're easier to work on in that respect as well this barrel here won't go to waste I've got other systems planned um, some that I may be selling off so it will go somewhere else or I might just gift it to um, one of our supporters and this little uh, bio filter I won't be using at all so I could use these in the new system. The only problem is I'd have to take them out while I was building the system. And I have a feeling these little fellas down here would like some sort of biofiltration while I'm working on the other system. So if you don't want to see the build for the radial flow settler and the bio and you haven't subscribed yet, do so now by hitting that subscribe button and then jumping on over to the bell icon. And then YouTube, hopefully, fingers crossed, will send you notification once I upload the videos to the channel. So there we go folks, the tank in the Frankenstein system is in. I just need to uh, do the corner bits with a little bit of sand, just fill them in. And it is slightly out of whack going this way, mainly because the pavers underneath are a little bit out of whack. I'm not worried about five mil, which is, you know, less than a quarter of an inch, about a fifth of an inch, less than that probably. So I'm not too worried about that. We have the hole out the back that will deliver the water to the solids filter. Now the ground's a little bit uneven there so I just need to clear out space and the settler will sit a little bit further back and then next to that we will have the moving bed bioreactor from there the water flows into the sump. Now from the sump the water will be sent back to the fish as well as the hydroponic side of things. Um, basically a dual loop, uh, one loop is fish, the other is hydroponics or horticulture. So main lines will go to all the different beds from that pump there and I'll just have valves on them to slow the water down for these three in particular, the NFT, the deep water culture, and the um, flow through wicking bed won't need as much of a flow, uh, either the dual root zone either really, as the wicking, uh, sorry, the media bed, too many beds, I'm getting confused. So the only little bit of plumbing I haven't played around with previously are the little infusionators I got from Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm. G'day Rob. He's basically created small venturis that will send air into the roots of your deep water culture and they are separate. They run on a separate little pump that just sits under the raft bed. So I haven't played around with them yet in a DWC style situation, just in a bit of a testing uh, tank that I knocked up a while ago. So it'll be interesting to see how they go in there. Um, do check out Rob's video, by the way, and channel and page. I'll link all his details for the infusionators down below. But yeah, that's pretty much well where we are up to today. So there's the beginning of the Frankenstein system, folks. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, she'll be up and running. And I hope you come along and enjoy the journey with us. Feel free to leave any comments or suggestions down in the comments section below. And I'll try and get back to them as soon as I can after uploading the video. Thank you again to all you folks who are helping to support the channel and letting me buy bits and pieces by joining the YouTube membership program and also our Farm Your Own Yard patron page. Really do appreciate the support. I'm pretty much all going to leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own aquaponics and gardens are booming and I'll catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing.